Well, hello, good morning. We're in Minot, North Dakota right now. This right here is Burlington Northern Santa Fe. And this is the high line. Now going this way, that heads to Seattle, Portland. It goes through Williston, Haver, Whitefish, Spokane, Hauser. But now this line here, that's the former Sioux line. And you go up to the Canadian border, blah, 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 Canadian border at Portal. God, that's hard. Canadian border at Portal. Ah. And on into Moose Jaw. Actually, I have ridden from Moose Jaw. There's a big yard where they classify cars coming into the U.S. And they cross at Portal and run to St. Paul, Minnesota this way. Now, I rode it back when it was Sioux Line, and my God, it took like 42 hours to get to St. Paul from here. And then again, I rode it, oh, five, six years ago, and it took the same dang amount of time. But if you're going south, you gotta be north of the four-way junction here. That way, sometimes they'll catch a, a red signal because this BNSF is occupied. So I always go up there north of the four-way catch south and vice versa you go down under this overpass and uh if you're going north now the gavin yard is uh four miles i guess and gavin they classify cars that go to grand forks versus uh fargo and from grand forks you can go to superior wisconsin and from Minneapolis, St. Paul, you well, basically go to anywhere. Des Moines, Kansas City. Uh, you can go to Superior out of Northtown Yard, too. This one's kind of a, a four-way that's on a, at an angle, so it's not like a tic-tac-toe. Now, it's... Yeah, there's, let's see, I keep getting my dumb thumb in the way. Old light tower. Yeah, I gotta remember to keep my fat thumb out of the way. And it's about 10 after 7 in the morning now. Yeah, that green car I rode on with that white powder, I it didn't make me sick or anything, but I sure wasn't feeling good. So I got off, took a shower, washed all my clothes, wiped down my backpack. You know, I've always been really clean. I, I don't know how... Some of these riders can go a month without a... Oh, I need to get me a, a red one. Hear that church bells? Now this signal here is for westbound traffic that may have to stop because of uh, train on that old shoe line is blocking it, but it's usually the other way around. The priority is the BNSF, so everything else stops. And that last track over there, that's an access line to get off the former shoe line onto the high line. I think I hear something. Can't tell where that is. 
Well. Being deaf in one ear, you can't judge where noise is coming from. Oh, southbound. There was just a train that heading eastbound, so he was probably stopped down there, no telling how long. I wish I was at that junction right now. Maybe I can make it up close. Could see him run over the four way. Got me a haircut yesterday too. Not in the face hair, but got a hand tight. Oh, it feels better. Hey, shoestring here. Uh, made it to Shelby, Montana. That's looking east. Now, right up here, about half mile, is your split. It comes off and goes south to Great Falls. In Great Falls, you can catch a different train down to Laurel. That's your link from the high line down to the low line. There was the cop right there. Now, looking north, and it's looking west. There's somewhat of a yard here. They uh, put together a train for Great Falls in this yard, and they also put one together for Sweetgrass in Montana and from Sweetgrass it runs up to Lethbridge and 
Calgary's uh, lift yard. There's your Albertsons. Now, there used to be an abandoned railroad shack down here. I'm going to see if it's still there. But you go out about three miles out past the interstate down there. See if I can pick up the interstate overpass. About a mile past it. The track tr takes a north turn and that goes to Sweetgrass and up into Canada. But if it goes straight, which 99% of the traffic does, that goes into Whitefish, uh, Seattle, Vancouver, Spokane. Not even sure what this street, this bridge is. But if you look down here, make sure I don't drop my phone. You see those two boxes, those two ducks? That was like in my other video I was talking about that propane that shoots the fire to oil the track to heat up that oil. Well, flame goes down the, those two trenches and out the bottom onto that old cold hard oil and softens it up so the switch will move properly. I'm going to have to get one going this winter. They'll only do it at a certain temperature. But it sounds like a jet airplane. And if it's nighttime, you can see blue flame. I'm going to go get some water down at Albertsons. And there's a pizza hut and a few grocery stores down. Also out here at that grain elevator way out there. That's Northern Seed Company. They also load entire grain shuttle trains there. 110 cars they load with whatever, soybeans. So I'm going to run over to Albertsons and get some fresh water. See if I can get better at this. In Shelby, Montana, I guess my... First trip here was probably 1990, I guess. It was Burlington Northern back then. Uh, they still put some pushers, the DPUs, on here in Shelby. Because once you get west of here, you got the town of Browning, and that's right on the base of the Rocky Mountains. So they go ahead and tie pushers in on here, here in uh, Shelby. Once they get out, you get cut bank, and then you got Browning. And then from there you got uh, West Glacier National Park, and on to Whitefish. Now Whitefish, that's in the Flathead Valley. That is a really gorgeous place, but. Ah, I may not can get off there. I, I got a ticket there about three years ago. Trespass ticket. They may or may, might not make me serve overnight, but anyway, let me grab the tripod. Well, this will be a true test because that wind is really howling. Now when trains come in from Great Falls, that's the bridge I made the video, the first one on right before this. That track goes south to Great Falls and Laurel, or it continues on the majority, nine times out of ten, the traffic goes on to Minot, to Fargo, Grand Forks, Minneapolis, Chicago, etc. So they'll pull the train in the yard here. See those? Grain hoppers are all local for like smaller elevators. Now that's Interstate 15 down there. And about a mile past it is your Verdon, B I R D E N, Verdon Junction. And you go north to Sweetgrass. Sweetgrass North, or nine times out of ten, the traffic goes on to Spokane, Seattle, Van Crazy. Uh, but 
one time me and a guy named uh, Butcher, we we caught out of this yard and we went up to Sweetgrass. And what happened? They they take the engines off. They take the well, this was back Burlington Northern. They take the Burlington Northern Santa Fe engines off the train they bring up out of here, out of Shelby. And at the same time, a CP, Canadian Pacific train, comes down. They take their engines off. They cross the border with those two engines and drag our train north into Canada. And the same thing, the BNSF will cross the border, grab the CP train, and come back here. That's kind of how they do it here, so there's at least one train a day stopping in here. The only thing about the high plains of Montana, there really isn't bushes to hide behind. So uh, there's a loading dock on the other side of them cars there, if it's still there. It's been there since the 1920s, so uh, I don't think it'd be gone. So I'm going to kind of get over there and get out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, that DPU ain't even running. Or I don't think it is. Let me know if you can hear it. I thought that was a tear at first, but maybe not. You can't really see all that well to be telling that. Well, I get down under I-15, and lo and behold, there's a junk train, a lot of grain on it. It's heading west. It's pulled over. It'll be a while. It's been here the last hour I've been walking it's got a DPU pusher on the end that's what I seen at first thought it was a switch engine but now for a ride I kind of feel exposed with that feeder road being right there I've already seen a couple of cops so I just don't want them harassing me but Likely, when it gets to Whitefish, it'll switch out some cars, too. So, once it gets a little dark, darker, I'm going to walk down a little further. Uh, I don't know why I'm looking at this camera like it's a mirror. I was making sure my beard was straight. But, of course, I won't know until I review the... <laughs> anyway, yeah... Uh, there's an overhead signal down about three quarters of a mile. So anything westbound that pulls over will stop right in here. You can see some old tag there. I couldn't find mine. 2007 was the last that I got off the train here. Well, last night I just rolled out right here kind of flattened out the gravel and waited and there were three trains that did stop now when I got down here yesterday oh man there was an or there was already a junk train sitting down here but by the time I got down here he had, he had already left then Three grain trains have stopped. It's just a matter of time. I wish I could have been down here just 20 minutes earlier yesterday. They moved one string of cars. There were some cars on that track last night. They brought them up that way. Sun's almost up. Had to bring my hoodie down. I actually didn't roll out till about 4.30 this morning. Uh, my hands just got too cold. So I laid down for a couple of hours. Didn't really sleep all that much. 
Big Bubba. Some old ones here. Well, I hear something. That was good timing. Let's see, Let's see what that signal is. Uh, it's not showing up. Yeah, it is. Okay. He's red, so it must be coming from the west. We'll wait on it and see. I can see the sun coming up underneath that green car reflecting off the railhead. Yeah, yard office. Well, there really isn't a yard office per se here, but I see a lot of workers down there on the left a lot. Well, not a lot, but I mean, workers. <laughs> yeah, I know I heard a, this I-15 Someone wrote in pencil. Now there is one on here from 1979. Uh, yeah, there it is. Or 74. Eight. Eight. Five. Seventy-four. Written in pencil. Oh, that's where that horn was from. It was that train. That train's been sitting there all night. That's what I hate about being under a dang overpass. Especially an interstate overpass. You hear that rubber tires on concrete. Some places there's so much traffic you can't even talk. Yeah, all the stuff that's in the yard here comes in from Canada and from Great Falls. Those are the only two locals that really stop here and drop off and pick up. Then other trains going east and west will pick up that stuff they dropped off. Oh, son. It's probably 45, I guess. It's not freezing. I can barely see my breath. Yeah, you see kind of where I flattened out the gravel there. Lay down for a couple of hours. But we'll see what stops. Uh. Oh, I went and got everything. A hot coffee and homemade they actually make them there these hash brown bacon egg and cheese sandwiches that's from town pump and my hands are so cold I can't hardly Lift the things over when I'm fixing it. I've never had a sandwich like this. I usually can't chew bacon, but yeah, that's yeah, real good. That's cool. They make them right there on the spot too. Mm, sun's up a little more. 
there will be eventually today a train stop. These are yard track on the right. Those two middle lines, that's the main, main one and two. And then you got a third main right here, that, that first one. And then a fourth one way over there and a fifth. A lot of times the trains get backed up and congested here. And then you got others that need to go around other trains pass them up priority from behind so they pull over here and let them do that. Mm. Well, see this ballast car, gravel car train? Herzog. Well, all the gravel that's loaded on the entire train comes off the rear car. And it's got a conveyor that just moves it from car to car, from front to back. See the hopper bottom right there? Well, all that, every single rock from each car drops down, empties from back to the front. Well, more or less all together. As soon as it pulls off the back, it's pulling straight down from the first car off the back. Falls down in that chute. Then carried on to the next car, and the next car, and the next car. All right, I made wish ram. There's the bridge we're going to. Ah, uh, remember those hexagon pillars of lava that cooled that I was telling you about like devil's towers made out of I'm gonna see if I can't get to some closer ones need to find where there's been a recent rock slide and they really prominent but it's the way the rock crystallizes when it's cool in a certain way But anyway, yeah, this is Little Wish Ram. There's only a, a bar here. There's no gas station, no grocery store. Now, that's Burlington Northern Santa Fe little yard they got just east of here. And there's a train sitting there. I think that's the bin man. What he'll do, let me pan back over to the... He'll cross this bridge over into Oregon. That, that's Oregon on the other side, Washington, my side. And he'll go down that, uh, right down into the center of uh, Oregon, across that bridge. But they gotta wait to a specific time before that bridge will come down. Yeah, there are several vehicles right in the vicinity. Ah, looks like I came all the way here for nothing. That's close as we're gonna get, unless I ride across it. I could do that. Yeah, let me show you them pillars now. If I can quit shaking. Isn't that cool? It's just the way it, the speed that lava lost heat that caused it to crystallize like that and long pillars devil's tower is that way too well i guess i'm gonna have to ride across or try to ride across well i guess i could tell a little bit about uh the rock it's uh igneous Here's some up close. Just looks like more or less any rock, but it forms and went by slow cooling lava. And see how it's broken on the edge real sharp? That's how you know uh, a rock's 
pretty young because all these rocks are about three million years old and it hadn't had time to erode on the edge smooth and if you look up there along the wall that just slowly breaks off like a glacier calving over time as it erodes and these big columns will fall looks like a big tree falling that'd be cool if i caught one in action i was thought about walking over there but boy that might be some snakes sunning themselves this morning God, it reminds me of australia now too there's some displacement rocks here rocks that weren't originally from this area and a long time ago last uh glacier uh last ice age there was a huge lake in montana called missoula lake and that would periodically the ice dam that held all that water back would break now north of here middle of the state there are huge boulders two three times bigger than houses way out in the middle of nowhere and they traced them back to idaho and montana and the only way they could have gotten there had, was because they rolled with a huge sheet of water from the lake swept swept across the land Yeah, it it sort of looks like I can't get down to the bridge. <laughs> sort of. You might be thinking, well, that no trespassing hasn't stopped you before. Yeah, there's uh, four or five railroad guys really close. And I, I'd hate for uh, the bull to come from Pasco or Vancouver, Van Crazy. Yeah, it's Oregon on that other side. That's the Columbia River. And Union Pacific goes along that uh, side of the river, south side of the river, BNSF on the north side of the river. Well, I believe this first train here in the middle is the Ben Man. There's no crew on it, but it's waiting for that bridge to go down where it can cross over the Columbia. Look at the hillside. It's just that short stubble grass. That's what uh, Neil Armstrong meant when he was on the moon, how it reminded me much of the high desert. Those rolling hills. That's what he was talking about, the moon looking like where they landed. Sea of Tranquility. I've never seen so many crew change vans in my life in one spot. There's three right there. There's a, another one. Yep, all they got is a bar here in Wish Rim. The store is gone. There used to be a general store here. But it's been 25 years since uh, I've stopped here. Uh, this sure the main line going to the right goes to Vancouver and on to Portland. But to the left will take you to Pasco. Spokane and then east where out where I just come from kind of got a stark beauty all its own those are natural ledges over there on the other side of the river in Oregon. It looks like steps. That's that pillar lava that just 
breaks off in big long chunks and speaking of which there's two of them being held together by rebar see how they form just perfect symmetry around you get two of them fastened together got a plaque but I can't read the thing I mean I see it but the Sun see if I can get a number off that Yeah, y'all walk down the length of that train and there's one ride on the whole dang thing. Wow, look how good the zoom is. Even though there's no trees here, it's still beautiful to me. That'd be a perfect picture right there. Is a Columbia Gorge. Let's see if we could zoom in on I-84 over there. I can't see the screen. There's BNSF tracks. It's my friend Brandon. Brandon come pick me up. He's gonna take me to the Dalles. Oh, they're right over there first. We're gonna go wine tasting. Oh yeah. <laughs> I thought I seen that place on the map. <laughs> it's a winery. No wine in allowed. Yeah, that zoom is incredible. See the stability on it. Let's see if we can see Mount Hood. I gotta look both ways. I can't tell if I'm looking at it or not. There it is. 